In the time it takes to make a pot of coffee in the morning, I'll show you how to create your own custom visual supply presets, helping to speed up your workflow and get you back to shooting. Hey everyone, my name is Hunter Harrison, and I'm just back from an amazing wedding. Last night, Stephanie and Ryan got married, and it was definitely one of the most beautiful I've ever done. It was absolutely incredible. So today is Sunday, and it's normally my day off. Um, but, you know, I thought I'd follow up on something that I've kind of had on my list for a little while. Um, a while back, I did a kind of introduction to Visual Supply Company's film preset package for uh, Lightroom. You can find that up on YouTube or on my website at hunterphotographic.com. And in that video, I mentioned that one of the things that bothered me about the presets was they adjusted noise reduction and sharpening. It turns out I was wrong. Uh, it does not touch noise reduction, but it definitely does affect the sharpening. So if you, for example, want a higher level of sharpening, um, then you apply the preset and it'll adjust that. So maybe not ideal for you. So uh, a couple people wrote in on my website. Casey Cashel says, would love a blogger video on how to go about making your own ISO noise reduction and sharpening presets. In all this time, I did not realize that I could have done that and have always depended on doing those things in Photoshop. Stephen B says the same thing. I too would like a video on how to uh, do one's own sharpening presets. So that's actually what we're gonna take care of today. Uh, we're going to take a look at a photo I shot recently for Carrie and Kevin, and we're gonna use that as an example on how to create your own preset that incorporates Visual Supply Company, but also incorporates your own changes. So it gets you a little closer to an efficient workflow where you just do one click and you're done. That's ideal. Um, so here we're gonna go ahead and take a look at um, this photo from Carrie and Kevin. I've got it up here on the screen so everybody can see it. And what I wanna do is start with the image as it came out of the camera. And that's kind of how you see it here. From here, I could go ahead and click on one of my existing presets. These are ones I've built based on my own workflow. Um, you can see what I've done is created a group called Quick Set and I have in here my import preset, and then custom ones I've made that incorporate Visual Supply Company, but also incorporate my changes. So, but instead of using one of these, what we're gonna go ahead and do is create one from scratch. So again, here we have the shot as it came out of the camera, and the first step is to go ahead and click on the film emulsion that you want to use from Visual Supply. In this case, I really like um, Fuji 400H normally, but for this one, just so it's something a little different, we're gonna do Fuji 400H++. So step one, click on that. And you can see now that the changes have been applied. Well, let's say that I don't like the sharpening that's applied as part of visual supply. So I'll go down here and I'll adjust the sharpening to what I desire it to be. Um, so let's say, just for argument's sake, we're gonna go from 25 to 50 and apply that. That's step two. And the remaining steps are gonna be very much the same. You're gonna wanna go through any other things that you wanna adjust that's different than the visual supply standard. So for example, let's say that I want to get rid of some of the split toning. So I'll go ahead and turn off split toning here and turn it off here. Um, something else I know that Visual Supply does is they assume a very low level for uh, white clipping. Let's say that I want that to be a little bit higher. So we'll go ahead and reduce that to negative 30. That should bring in more of the whites. And let's say that's ideal for the way that I want to work. So at this point, I've adjusted everything to include what I want in my custom preset. So. I'm gonna go ahead and create the custom preset itself. I'll go up here to the top of the presets menu. We'll click on the little plus, and now we get a pop-up box for creating your own preset. So what I'll do here is I'll give it a name. We'll just call it custom preset and VSCO 400H plus plus. And now what I want to do is go through here and select those settings that should be included in the preset. If you select a setting and you apply the preset, then anytime you click on the preset, that setting will be changed. If you don't select a setting, then it's not included in the preset 
and when you go to apply the preset, it won't affect it. So as an example here, we didn't change the grain. So if I don't click grain, then it won't be changed. I'm gonna go here through here and click everything I want included. Uh, white balance, I don't because that's very specific to each photo. Um, basic tone and exposure, most of the stuff I don't want included, but I did make a change to white clipping. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that's included as well. Um, but visual supply does adjust black clipping, so we'll make sure that's turned on as well. And they do adjust shadows and highlights. We'll move on, tone curve, definitely part of the visual supply preset, so we'll go ahead and apply that as well. Sharpening, the whole reason that we're here talking about this today, we'll go ahead and make sure that's included. Color treatment, saturation, vibrance, adjustments, all want that included. Split toning, we made changes to that as well. There's no graduated filters included in any of the visual supply presets, um, and I didn't apply one, so we'll go ahead and leave that blank. I'm actually gonna leave noise reduction settings blank as well, because depending on what ISO you were using when you shot the photo will depend on what ISO or what um, noise reduction settings you want to use. So I actually do that as a separate preset. So instead of including it in this one, we'll do that as a separate one. Um, I know that I apply lens correction, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on as well. Um, visual supplies, standard package, does effects like uh, vignetting and grain, so we'll make sure that's turned on. Most important, process version and calibration. This is where Visual Supply gets the meat of its work done. They have custom calibration profiles that are included with the Pro Kits, so definitely make sure that you check these. If you don't have the Pro Kit, you have a standard version, then you don't have those color calibration profiles, but nonetheless, you may apply one of your own. So it's always good practice to go ahead and and make sure that these are included. So we'll go ahead and create that and we're done, nice and simple. So you can see it's created it down here under user presets. And let me give you a quick example of the way this works. Let's say that we reset all back to the beginning and I did adjust the white balance on this. So I'll go ahead and set that back the way it was before. Now, if I want to go ahead and apply the visual supply 400H++, but with my changes, I just go down here to custom preset, VSCO 400H++, click that, and boom, we're right back where we were before, but this time with the changes that I want. Nice and simple. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and gives you an idea on how to create a visual supply preset that also includes your own changes. Um, stop back again here soon. I know I'm running really late getting some recipes up that I like on how to use Visual Supply. I deliberately decided to wait because I knew the Lightroom 4 version was coming out. It's out now. As soon as I can get to it, we'll have that up as well. Again, my name's Hunter Harrison, and you can find out a lot more on hunterphotographic.com.